Cool. All right. Now I've got a question for you. Now I know you yeah. are the co-founder of a company right. that rents vehicles to Uber and Lyft right. drivers, but I would like you to chime in on the, uh, the age old debate of renting versus sure. owning your car yeah. and which one, um, you know, is better for Uber drivers. Should, is it better you think to rent yeah. or own a car? Because this is something that comes up over and over, uh, you know, in discussions and forums. And I'm curious, uh, yes. although you might have a slightly biased take, but I, I'd love to hear your answer. Right. Maybe not. <laughs> right. So, so my, my, my initial thought process is rent the car, right? Yeah. yeah. Like you say, I'm somewhat biased, but, uh, you know, let's, let's be realistic. The fact that I've done over 4,000 rides mm -hmm. and I've done it with my own vehicle and yeah. not with my own vehicle, I've, I've felt the pain as someone who was driving eight to 10 hours a day for six days a week. Yeah. Um, I felt the pain of what can go wrong with a vehicle mm -hmm. quickly. Yeah. And so not having to worry about that. And, and it's, it's small things versus large things, Harry. And so when you think about it like this, if something happens to your, you know, four or five year old vehicle, if the motor or the transmission, right, yeah. a major repair goes wrong. And when you're doing, when you're doing drivers put two to 300 miles per day on a yeah. vehicle, that's a significant, these cars, they run for eight, 10, 12 hours straight. Mm -hmm. They weren't necessarily designed to do that. Mm -hmm. And when things start to come up and you realize the reality of what's happening with this vehicle that you're driving, the diminishing value, if it is a newer vehicle, right? Because you got to think about that when you yeah. want to trade it in, right? And the high miles on it, those pieces that come up uh, really start to impact the amount of money you're spending on this vehicle. Yeah. And so renting this vehicle and then adding the insurance. And remember, it's not just car insurance, right? There's the additional, your, your insurance companies, they want that additional rider for right. ride share coverage on there. So it, it's insurance plus then it's additional insurance on top of that for when you're carrying passengers or packages around in your vehicle. Uh, you know, so there's an additional risk there. So I think the risk is lower. I think that the reward is higher with renting. If your transmission goes out in your vehicle, you come back and you pick up the keys to a different car and you get on the road. Yeah. And I learned this from drivers that come to me and they say to me that my car's in the shop. I have to keep earning money to pay my bills. I don't know how I'm going to get enough money saved up or it's going to take me several months to do it to put three to $4,000 into my vehicle. The last thing I'm going to say about that, Harry, is right now what we've seen with inflation over the last 12 to 24 months here, what's gone on with that and the rising cost of prices, we've seen that in the industry as well. Yeah. So you, you see that as a consumer when you go and get those new tires and how much those new tires cost or how much that motor is going to cost or those brakes cost. We see yeah. it in every, every facet of the industry. Uh, so, you know, I yield over as someone who's been a driver and used my own personal car and seen the wear and tear that goes on it. And then not even having to worry about getting separate insurance, the fact that it's packaged all up in one together for us, insurance, maintenance, our new cars come with the dash cams, you know, that's a safety feature as well. Yeah. All these little things that tend to add up, you don't have to worry about that. It's packaged up nicely in one, in one piece for you. Yeah. I'm sold. <laughs> no, I, th I think that, you know, it's sort of like, you know, this has come, this is, you know, I've been doing this for eight years and this comes up all the time, right? Because people right. say, you know, first, I think they kind of make the apples to oranges comparison. Oh, I could sure. go lease a car for three, four, yeah. 500 a you month, could. but you really can't lease that car and then use it for rideshare because you'll put four right. to five times the miles, Correct. right? You might have a 10,000 uh, mile annual limit. You'll hit that in the first month or two, right? right. So right. Um, yep. that'll, you'll knock that out pretty quick. But I do think that, you know, if you go and rent from, I think a really well-run fleet operator, right. you know, such as yourself, right. rideshare cars or another uh, fleet operator, I do think that, you know, you guys are probably buying cars in bulk and getting some discount there. You're doing maintenance and getting some discount right. there. So obviously right. as a business, you guys have to make some profit right? So I don't think it's right. as simple as people, you know, think or understand, right? You are saving money, you know, by doing things in bulk in certain areas. Right. And of course you make some profit because you're running a business. But I, I guess like what I would say is that for drivers that are thinking about rent versus own, I'm okay with people saying, you know, owning is better, but as long as they've right. done the math, right? As long as they're right. really understanding like what the depreciation and maintenance right. and, you know, things yeah. like that. Cause even you mentioned gas, right? Like a lot of newer sedans and even midsize sedans like the Kia Forte get amazing right. gas mileage, right? Like they the do. technology, you know, I mean, a 40 mm -hmm. miles per gallon is better than some of the early hybrid, you know, Toyota Priuses, right? right? You're so right. Yeah, I you're think right. that 
I think that, um, you know, if people really go in and look at the numbers, and I remember we did a campaign with Ford where I tested out a, a hybrid Ford Fusion, and I took right. it out on the road, and I got very similar feedback. It was like a nice midsize sedan. And, you know, honestly, like sitting in the car for four, five, six hours, I don't know if I ever made it eight hours in a day, but even four, five, six hours, I was like, wow, this car is more comfy. You know, <laughs> like a lot mm -hmm. of drivers like to come in with these, you know, small, uh, compact uh, cars, you know, um, I'm trying to think like a Toyota Yaris or something like that, you know, one of these like really little mini cars, which is great for gas mileage, but it's kind of like, frankly, uncomfortable for the driver, uncomfortable mm -hmm. for the passenger. And so it totally makes sense. You you get better tips if you have, you know, a nicer, a bigger Uber X car. Yeah. So I guess what I would say is yeah. I don't know that it's as clear cut as some people think. I think if you're doing the math right. uh, in a lot of situations, you know, and even like the peace of mind, like I think just knowing like what your weekly expenses, how much you have to earn, I think that peace of mind is, you know, valuable to some, if not most drivers. Great. I definitely agree.